Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take a look at the fraction in general to find out where all the max and mins can be found. So we already found the first min and the first max. Now let's see where we find the second min and the second max. Well it turns out that the second min is found in such a way that if we look at the correct lookup angle, of course this is the angle theta right there, look at the correct lookup angle in such a way that when we go one quarter into the beam, so this would be the distance right here would be a over four, we go one quarter into the beam and then realize that this portion of the beam right here has to travel exactly a half a wavelength farther than this portion of the beam in such a way that the first quarter cancels out the second quarter. And then of course that means that the third quarter must then also cancel out the fourth quarter because if I then go one quarter into the beam starting at the halfway point, I realize that this right here is exactly half a wavelength farther than this, which means that they cancel each other out, which means the first quarter cancels out the second quarter, the third quarter cancels out the fourth quarter, and none of the beam gets through because there's complete destructive interference between each of the sections of the beam. In that way, we find our second minimum. If we then calculate that the extra distance is a over 4 times sine of theta, and we set it equal to lambda over 2, the point at which we have destructive interference, we then replace the sine by the tangent, and the tangent is the opposite over adjacent, y over l. Again, this distance right here is y, the point where that um, maximum, minimum occurs. L is the distance to the screen from the slit. And then we can see that we can calculate for the distance y, which is equal to 4 times lambda l divided by 2a. So, for the second min, we realize that y has to equal 4 lambda l divided by 2a. And notice you're beginning to see a pattern here. What about the second max? Well, if we go one-fifth the distance into the beam, and we realize that the extra distance right here is equal to a half a wavelength, and one-fifth into the beam, that extra distance would then be equal to a over 5 times the sine of theta. And so if we set that equal to lambda over 2 and solve for y, then we get y equals 5 lambda l over 2a. So for the second max, we find that y is equal to 5 lambda l over 2a. Now why does that give you a maximum? Well, it does because the first fifth of the beam will cancel out the second fifth of the beam, and the third fifth of the beam will cancel out the fourth fifth of the beam, which leaves you with one fifth of the beam that has nothing to cancel out with. This one fifth of the beam gets through and, and makes a bright spot right there. Not nearly as bright as the bright spot that you get from the uh, first maximum and definitely not nearly as bright as the one that you get from the center maximum. Remember, the center maximum, the whole beam gets through, illuminates the screen. The first maximum, that would be one-third of the beam makes it through, and the second maximum, one-fifth of the beam makes it through and gives you the, the uh, bright spot on the screen. Then the third minimum is found when you go one-sixth into the beam and you realize that this extra distance right here a over 6 times sine of theta, when we set that equal to lambda over 2, we then realize that that will give us a minimum because the first 1 sixth will cancel out with the second 1 sixth of the beam, the third sixth will cancel out the fourth sixth of the beam, the fifth sixth will cancel out the sixth sixth of the beam, the whole beam cancels out, you have destructive interference, and there's nothing to be seen on the screen, another dark spot. And then if you angle it up a little bit more so that theta becomes even larger in such a way that the extra distance right here is one-seventh into the beam. And so the extra distance is a over seven times sine theta. If we set that equal to lambda over two, again, we get destructive interference in such a way that the first one-seventh cancels out the second seventh, the third seventh cancels out the fourth seventh, the fifth seventh cancels out the sixth seventh, and the last one-seventh of the beam, only one-seventh of it, but still something, will make it to the screen and put a small maximum on there as well. So then you can start seeing the pattern that the first minimum is found at 2 lambda L over 2A, the second minimum 4 lambda L over 2A, the third minimum 6 lambda L over 2A, and for the maximum, 3 lambda L over 2A, 5 lambda L over 2A, and 7 lambda L over 2A. So we can write a general equation. All the minima can be found by taking 2 times m lambda L over 2A, and all the maximum can be found by taking 2m plus 1 times lambda L over 2A. And notice that m is simply 
the first, the second, the third, the fourth max, so in this, or min. So in this case, for the first min, if m is 1, that gives you the first min, it'd be 2 times 1, lambda L over 2a, we'd get this equation right here. For the first max, it would be 2 times 1 plus 1, that's 2 plus 1 is 3, lambda L over 2a, which gives you this one right here. For the second minimum, we get 2 times 2, which is 4 lambda L over 2a, which we get uh, this one right here. And for the second maximum, it would be 2 times 2 plus 1, 2, that's 4 plus 1, or 5 lambda L over 2a, gives you the second maximum. So this is how we find the general equations. This is y equals that quantity, and actually I probably should have written that out, so let me correct that a little bit. Let me make a little bit more room. So the minimum, all the minima can be found by taking y is equal to this, and all the maximum points can be found, all the max can be found by taking y equals to that. All right, so those are the two general equations to allow us to find the location of all the max and minima points on the diffraction on the screen directly across a single slit on the other side. So again, diffraction patterns are formed by a single slit. The light goes through and bends in all directions. And then you can see because of various locations on the screen, you have a different combination of which portion of the beam will cancel out with which other portion of the beam in such a way that sometimes some portions make it through and put a maximum on there. In other cases, all of it will be destroyed through destructive interference and you'll see a dark spot on the screen. And that's what we call a diffraction pattern. And that's how we find those locations.